Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode here on the My Gardener channel. I'm so excited to get to continue this series on how to grow in containers because I think it is just, there, there is such a lack of information out there on how to do it. And I think people really want to do it more. And I think also as a society, we need to be using the spaces where we can't grow vegetables to start growing vegetables, which would be on your patio. You know, pots are a great way to increase your food production, save money for your family, and get some nutrient-dense food for your family. So today's episode is going to be on basil because basil is a great plant to grow in containers. I don't think enough people try it, and I seriously would recommend it. It's extremely expensive in the stores, and to be frankly honest, dried from the store just does not taste the same. Once you taste fresh basil from the garden, Wow, it is just so good. I mean, you add it with some fresh homegrown tomatoes. Check out our tomato growing guide, by the way. Um, you know, you add that with some fresh homegrown tomatoes, a little bit of olive oil, and some crumbled feta cheese, and you've got yourself a recipe for one of the best snacks for the summertime. Um, so I wanna show you how to grow it in containers. It's so easy, it really grows itself, and it grows like a freaking weed. So, um, <laughs> a very delicious weed. <laughs> so let's get started. Let's head over to the potting station. I'm gonna show you the pot size that I use. Really nothing scientific with that. I'm gonna show you the soil type that I use. We're gonna talk about fertilizing. We're gonna talk about uh, sunlight requirements and, uh, and watering. It's really it, it's very easy. And I wanna stress that it's easy. So this entire thing, do not get overwhelmed. Do not get overwhelmed and realize it's very, very easy. And these things that I'm, that I'm talking about are just essential basic tips. So if you follow these, you're gonna be fine. You are going to be fine, I promise. So uh, let's go over to the potting station and let's get this thing started. All right, pot size. One and a half gallons is all I go. If you can go bigger, go bigger, but you're really gonna need to add more plants because the thing is, is basil likes to be cramped. Believe it or not, basil grows really well when it's cramped. And where most plants would get stressed, basil like, you know what? Hey, I'm fine. It's no big deal. Um, so as long as you as long as you give them the right soil type and you give them right uh, right fertilizer requirements and you keep them well watered, they can stay really cramped in a pot. So you can get a lot of productivity out of a smaller pot, which is why I like to use my smaller pots for growing things that can be cramped. So I can use I can save my bigger pots for things that need a bigger pot rather than you know flip flopping it and having to either go get more pots or sacrifice growing something that I really like growing on a patio. So let's uh, get it fill up with soil now. Soil requirements, just like everything else, a potting specific soil. You can you you can make your own. I'll show you how to make your own in a second. Um, but basically, it's going to be the best stuff for you because potting soil is going to be intended for container gardens. And container gardens are a little bit different than growing in ground because you don't have all the components that you have outside. So outside, you have the worms that kind of go through the soil and loosen it up. You have microbes and fungi that help to keep it aerated. And that's just not found in container gardening as much. Um, there are some potting soils and stuff that have beneficial microbes and fungi in them, like a pro mix. I've seen a pro mix. However, I find oftentimes that the pro mix compacts down after a while because there's just not enough of the, the organic matter and the particulate matter like perlite and vermiculite that helps to keep it really loose. There is some, but it just doesn't cut it. So I would not consider that a potting mix necessarily. Um, I get asked all the time about that. So um, it's a great mix for starting seeds, but I just it's not a, it's not a potting specific mix, bottom line. So um, make sure you get a, a potting specific mix or you can make your own by getting one part compost one part perlite, one part vermiculite, and you can even add some sand in there that helps the drainage, helps to keep things loose. And ideally what you want is something you can take in your hand, pack together in a ball, but as soon as you touch it, it crumbles apart. That's what you want. So we're just gonna fill up this pot here about an inch from the top. You don't need to fill it all the way up. And uh, then all we're gonna do is we're going to plant our plants. We have four plants here, but each cell contains you know, two, three plants, and again, something I'm not going to stress. I'm not going to stress about the amount of plants in here. I'm just going to fill it up really nice and they're going to grow out so well for you. They're going to bush out nicely and it's really going to create kind of a little mini hedge of basil that's going to smell amazing. As the wind blows, it's going to move the leaves and basil is extremely, uh, it's extremely easy to grow uh, in containers. Like this is just, this is almost probably one of the easiest guides you're gonna have here. All right, so when it comes to the sunlight requirements for basil, 
you just want to make sure they get at least four hours of sun. Basil actually do not need that much sun to do well, which makes it nice for people that live in apartments or have a patio that might not be in the most ideal location um, because it's, it's a little bit difficult to move a patio. Um, but what is nice is that if you do not have enough sun in the location where you have a patio, simply move the pot to where there is more sun and then move it back. Um, because of the fact that basil just needs about four hours of sun to do great. And if you give them more, they're gonna love it. But any less and they're going to get kind of laggy and you're really gonna find that they don't put out that many leaves. Um, the more sun you give them, the more leaves they're gonna put out. And that means more basil for you. So another thing is when it comes to the fertilizing is that the, the fertilizing aspect of this is really simple. So just like they are very, they're, they're very laissez-faire. They're very kind of, you know, hey, whatever, just give me, give me at least four hours of sun and I'll be fine. It's pretty much that way with fertilizer as well. You don't have to be too, too particular with fertilizer. Just give them an all purpose. We give them trifecta because that's what we give all of our plants, but just make sure they get an even fertilizing of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium micronutrients. And then if you want, you can add in a beneficial fungi and microbes, which helps to break down the organic matter. That's all found in Trifecta Plus. But if you wanna make your own, just uh, one part blood meal, one part bone meal, one part green sand, and one part uh, of the uh, ground up eggshells and banana peels. So that's gonna give you, again, an all, all around mix, but it doesn't have the microbes and the fungi. But your plants are gonna love it and your plants are gonna grow. I only fertilize once a month because of the fact they do like fertilizer, believe it or not, they, you know, they're not very finicky, but the more you fertilize, the more they're gonna grow to a certain extent. They're not, gonna, they're not going to use all the fertilizer and so that'll remain in the soil for when they do need it. But by fertilizing on a regular basis, it's gonna keep the plant growing, it's gonna keep the plant producing, and by keeping it clipped back, it will really just continue to exponentially grow. And you're gonna have, by the end of the season, you're gonna have a shrub that's probably two feet tall by about two feet wide in this little pot here. It's unbelievable how much it puts out. And just and all, all you have to do is uh, fertilize it on a regular basis. Now, the very last thing I wanna talk about is watering. When it comes to watering your basil, basil is very prone to going limp. As much as I hate to say it, this is the, this is the downfall when it comes to basil. Basil will go limp so quickly, and once it goes limp, it just looks sad for a very long time. So by watering it on a regular basis, um, no, no less than two times a week, especially in a pot of this size. In a larger pot, you have a little more forgiveness, like some of our other pots here. You have a little more forgiveness, but with a small one and a half gallon, two gallon pot like this, um, you're going to need to water on a, on a regular basis. So at least two times a week and you're gonna be fine. But again, don't just go on two times a week. I wanna stress that because oftentimes people, they say, well, you said two times a week. Well, yeah, two times a week for me. But make sure that your soil doesn't need to be watered. If you already watered two times a week and your soil's dry, maybe it needs three times a week. Um, so what works for me doesn't always work for everybody else because Michigan is a whole lot different than Arizona. And weather is vastly different between the two locations. So um, go based on what you see, but it's a good place to start at least. And that's really it. That is really all there is to growing basil. I hope you all will try it. It's something that I recommend for everyone. It's very nutrient dense and it's an herb that is so highly sought after that they charge a lot in the stores for it. And if you can grow it yourself, which to be honest, you can grow like 10 times more than you can get in the store in about a month. Um, so you're gonna have more than you know what to do with and you'll be giving it away to friends and family and you'll be putting it on pizza, you'll be drying it for the winter time, we always do that too. So there's a lot of uses for it and you can save a ton of money by growing some of your herbs as well. So I hope you all enjoyed. Hopefully you all are growing bigger going home. Try basil, let me know if you're trying basil in the comments box below and how it did for you and I will catch you all later. See ya, bye.